Okay, I'm with Matt Browning, the painter responsible for these murals on the walls here. Matt, these four over here were the first you painted. Bob Marley, Bert Jans, John Lennon and Bob Dylan. Is there any particular reason why you chose those four musicians to start off this series of murals? Well, I think the original thought was that uh, if I didn't do any more, I had to put those four up. If it didn't go any further, you see what I mean? Oh, so you mean these were the four that so fitted together? Dylan, Dylan first, and foremost. And after that, the other three. In between them, they covered a lot of territory. That's right. And of course, you go around the walls here. There are many, many great musicians. Next to the Bob Marley, you've got Jim Morrison from The Doors, Janis Joplin. Over here, you've got Miles Davis, Neil Young, John Coltrane, and Hank Williams, Buddy Waters, Buddy Holly, the Kinks, Creedence Clearwater Revival. All these musicians have one thing in common, and that they've slipped through the net of show business. They're Genuine rock and roll artists are genuine artists as opposed to pop people. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The uh, pop doesn't appeal to me, I'm afraid. And essentially, this is, um, as much as anything, it's a personal project. So it's something that uh, when I got the opportunity to do it here, then it was very much what I wanted to put on. So it reflects uh, a lot about me uh, in the choices that I've made. Uh, but as, as regards the actual paintings themselves, then uh, you could look at it and say, why are some bigger than others? Why does this reflect their significance, their importance? Not a bit, it's just how well they work in the space. So Chuck Berry's got to be big so that his stupid, iconic image fits that wall and looks right. Um, and somebody may be smaller, that, that's just because it fits in better. That's, that's the thing with this picture. It is a picture, no, it's not a group of pictures, it has to be a picture. So it's a balancing act, trying to keep it all going when you don't really know what's going to come next. And at the front, of course, is the, the major work, Robert Johnson. Uh, Robert Johnson, uh, not everybody knew who he was when you first put him up there. No, I'm sure, that's right. Uh, people were expecting maybe somebody a bit better known that he's up there because for you well all the people in the room if they could gather here well, that would be something wouldn't it <laughs> if all these people came in they'd say uh, well you know who influenced you if you went really way back where would it all begin for you and hopefully it would be that guy outside so he'd be one of the names you know, he would be one that you couldn't leave out. So the fact that his uh, his image is less well known, like Bert Yatch, it's as much as anything, it invites people to say, "Well, who's that? I'm sure I must know that person." And it gets a conversation going mm. about, about the images and about the musicians and about this place, which is. In many ways, the, the people who play here are an extension of what these musicians have been and continue to do. Absolutely. Music it's is art, art is music. It all weaves. Everybody uh, contributes, and everybody's. No, nobody can sing and play without being influenced by something that's happened before. Um, 
and I like to think that people would acknowledge these fears. So, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that person's there. I feel more at home. Well, people do say that musicians who play here feel that these musicians in the world are like friendly spirits. Yeah, uh, that's good. And it's a good atmosphere to, for them. And also humbling to realise that, you know, whatever you're doing, you're just one of many on a long road of troubadours stretching right back. Some, you know, with varying degrees of success. Yes. They, some people only become famous after they died, like Robert Johnson. A lot of people who uh, in their lifetime won't appreciate it, but like other artists when they die, their art becomes acknowledged. Now you, you also do all kinds of work. You've got a painting just down oh, here. Yeah. Want to bring that up and we'll have a talk about that. This one here. Does it have a title? Uh, no. It doesn't have a title, uh, but it's... It's a bridge over the River Seine in Paris. And, uh, it, it's one of a series of paintings that I've produced. Um, when I came back from France, after a, a recent visit, and, uh, it, 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 one of the things I like to explore in, in painting is, is to uh, perhaps reduce some of the references that make things immediately identifiable so that you can enjoy the actual marks a bit more. There's a reference, I like there to be a reference there so you could walk across that bridge, I've walked across that bridge, I know it's there, and that's the river saying flowing through. But at the same time, um, it's about colours and shapes and it's about the, the surface. So uh, the surface of this one is influenced by by sticking newspaper on here and the river flows through. By sticking newspaper on with glue, um, the paper shrinks, creates ridges. So when you drag a dry brush across it, you can catch the light on the ripples of the water. It's, uh, Very it's effective. More importantly, it makes me think differently about how I approach painting. If, if I throw something in there that's going to force me to react to it, in other words, when, what happened with the paint, with the paper, as it stuck onto the canvas, how can I use it? How can I employ it to best effect? Uh, so that one. Uh, this one's also from France. Oh yes, that, that's the Cathedral of Notre Dame in Paris. Let's talk a little bit about this one. Yeah. Was this done roughly at the same time? Uh, yep, yep, just a few months later. And so did you make a sketch of it? Oh yeah, I'd have, I'd have drawn this. Uh, and here again, um, see, it, the newspaper that I employed in here was put into this pot where I knew I was going to be painting trees. Uh, and there's bits of newspaper in here and here. That rewards close inspection. You, you can see it's a church, cathedral, but when you get up close, you can notice things about that that might surprise you. And certainly here. One of the challenges of this one is to paint a cathedral without representing it like a photograph. Because there are repeated shapes. Um, there are sort of nine boxes in this part. Um, but for it to work as a painting, then I would try and treat each one differently. So although there's uh, tracery and the stonework here, it's treated differently in each box. Um, it's going to be visually interesting. It's still, all right, it's a church, it's a cathedral, but uh, it's a painting as well. And then this major one behind here, this one is a quite a big scale. Yeah, that, that's a back street in Montmartre. A lot of the streets in Paris, you look uh,
because Montmartre's top of the hill. So there are lots of steps. This is a railing here. There's lots of steps down, and you get views which uh, don't allow much of a uh, horizon and sky. So you get a different perspective on things. And here, th this is my interpretation of, uh, of a back street in Montmartre. So I've taken liberties with all sorts of shapes and things and abstracted it in certain ways to try and create some of that. It's a sort of seediness about the place. It's so lived in and, and so many characters will have passed through it. Um, I wanted it to be reflective of its history. So it's not a photograph. And have you used a similar newspaper under the Yeah, yeah. To create that effect? Yeah. So, so some of the print shows through in places and that in a sense there and you can see the print in here and here um, it can be quite a grubby place like a lot of cities so people's uh, trash and so on and old newspapers lying around on the floor and, they, and it's part of what makes the place what it is so when it's uh, allowed to become part of the picture. It's a reference. It makes people think, perhaps. But the colours, of course, are uh, totally my imposition on, on what is there. In a sense, that, that place was very, very grey. If, if there was any colour in there, there was bits and pieces of blue hmm. in, in reality. But, uh, again, it's it's a painting. I mean, it seems to have a correlation to the one in the Notre Dame, the colours. Yeah. Yeah. And as, as you say, normally you'd expect France to be lighter colours, blue skies, that type of That's right. But, it, uh, but I'm adding a different sort of uh, drama, imposing myself on, on, uh, on the images. So th these are, uh, in a sense, they're a limited palette, but the reds and oranges and yellows. 